Oh hey, how are you guys? So you know when you scrub through Instagram and everything kind of looks the same? Well today I'm gonna teach you how to do a little trick that makes your photos come to life and makes it more interesting. And it really got my engagement up. So it's gonna be really easy. You can do it in five minutes and we're gonna start right now. So what you want to do is you want to pick a photo with a distinct foreign background. Um, you can also do it with other pictures. I've done it, if you go to my Instagram, I've done it with a lot of landscape photography stuff, but uh, for the, it's easier to do it with when you have like a distinct foreign background. But for this video, I'm going to make it easy and pick just a person standing in the foreground, actually like a picture of me. You can mask easily around me. And what I want to do is you want to edit your picture first, how you want it, and then you want to open it up in Photoshop. So once we have the picture open here, the first thing we want to do is you want to check what we're going to animate. So I'm usually animating the person, so that would be me. And then there's this log sticking out here, so we could animate this too. And then there's this line here, which would be pretty easy to animate. And then obviously here the trees in the background. So I'm usually starting out with animating the person in the shot, like the foreground element. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go to the pen tool on the left hand side here and I'm gonna start somewhere and just masking around the edges here. So the preciser you are the better. If there's a dot not accurate on the line here you can just hold command and you can drag it around. Just going around my whole body here. And I'm going to fast forward that a bit because you don't want to look at me doing the masking. And don't worry about this little thing here. Technically, I would have to mask that too, but we don't have to worry about it because the background is kind of out of focus and it's so small that we don't even would realize it when we post it on Instagram. So once we're at the end here, we want to connect the two dots. And there we go, we see that I masked around the whole object. And what we wanna do now is we wanna right click on one of the dots and then we wanna go to make selection. And this opens up this little box here. And what do you wanna put in? Feather radius, you wanna put one pixel. And you're gonna hit okay. And now you're gonna see that the shape around my body is selected. And what we're doing now is we wanna command copy. So we wanna copy that selection. Then we wanna go down here and we wanna create a new layer. And we wanna paste the selection onto that new layer. So once we paste that on, we wanna delete the new layer, what we have here from the background. So how we wanna do this is we're gonna select the background. So click on the background and then command click on the layer one. This selects the layer with the background still selected. Um, the next step is gonna be shift delete, opens up the fill box here. And what we wanna put the Fill box two is content aware fill to 100% and normal mode. And hit OK. And it takes a while. Okay, so once we deselect layer one, we see that Photoshop successfully eliminated um, the layer mask. And once we zoom in a little closer we see there's still a little bit of an outline here so what i'm usually doing is i'm gonna go to the left hand side here and i'm gonna go to, to the clone tool 
stamp tool and then we just want to stamp over the edges here a bit to get rid of the, that outline. And just like that, I'm gone. But if I activate the layer here again, I'm back. So now we successfully separated myself from the background. I'm thinking we're just gonna quickly go around this little log here. It's just gonna be way easier than the person. And because I'm standing on the log, it just gives like this nice effect when the log is moving in a different direction than I am. And again, what we wanna do is we wanna select one of the dots here, right click on it, make selection, Feather radius one, okay, makes the selection. Then we wanna copy this, make a new layer and paste it onto the new layer. Then we, again, we wanna delete this lock from the background. So we click on the background, we command click on layer two, and then we're gonna shift delete and bring up the content aware fill box, hit okay. And just like that, the log is gone. So again, we wanna stamp around it a bit to make it disappear. And just like that, the log is gone. It also helps cause like the outline is now way sharper than before. Cause we eliminated it from the background here and stamped over it from a different layer. So now we separated the log and myself and I'm thinking we do one more separation here. Just a nice little line here where the water is. So we're gonna again select the background, select the pen tool and this is a really easy one. Just go over here where the water hits the land and right click again, make selection Feather radius one, copy, new layer, paste it on, select the background, command click on the layer, shift delete. And this is probably gonna bring up a lot of trees here in the water. Yeah, there we go. The, the most important here is the edge here. So we wanna go over again and stamp a little bit. So now we got the trees on a separate layer. We got the water in a separate layer. We got the log on a separate layer and we got myself on a separate layer. So what we wanna do next is we wanna open up a new file. And Instagram resolution is gonna be 1080 by 1350. I just have this preset here and we're gonna create the file, make it 1080 wide and 1350 high. Open it and just gonna select all the layers here and then drag them into the new file. So this is gonna be obviously zoomed in. So we wanna hit Command T and we wanna drag it make it fit and then hit return. So now we have all the layers in here. We don't need that layer that was in here from the start. So we can delete that. And the next thing is we wanna do, we wanna convert the layers into smart objects. So you wanna click on the layer, right click on the layer, convert to smart object. Hit that and do that for all the layers. So once we've done it for all the layers, we wanna go to the timeline here. If you don't have that timeline here, you go up to window and you wanna activate it here on timeline. And we now have now this little timeline here. 
in Photoshop and you want to hit create timeline video create video timeline so now we got these little looks like Premiere Pro in Photoshop it's actually pretty cool and we have the time here and what we want to do is click on the first layer that's going to be myself and I'm just really starting with the person in the foreground usually and what I want to do is I want to go open up the layer on this little arrow here and I want to hit transform to create a keyframe at the very start of the video make sure you're at the very start then you go to the very end of the video and you want to hit command T on your keyboard this selects the first layer and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sh hold shift and I'm going to just gonna drag myself up a little bit just to make myself a little bigger just really subtle I mean subtle is usually looks way better than extreme changes and once I'm happy with the position I'm just gonna hit return and when I'm playing that right now you see I'm just getting bigger over time which is looks really cool to make that even more interesting, I'm going to animate the log here. And the log, I want it to go in the separate direction, uh, in, in the opposite direction. So, so the log, I want to have it come out of the, of the picture here to make it a little bit more realistic that I'm coming, that the log is getting closer and I'm getting bigger too. So I'm going to hit, go to the, go to the very beginning of the video. I'm going to hit transform again the clock here to create a keyframe then I'm going to the very end of the video and I'm just gonna hold shift make it a little bigger and I'm just gonna drag it out a bit like that not too much I'm just subtle changes maybe zoom in a bit to see it better kind of like that so let's see how that looks when we play it. Yeah, I think that looks really good. See how the log is moving out and I'm getting bigger. So to create an even more interesting effect, like a parallax effect kind of, we want to animate the background. So same thing again. Um, I want to animate the water, go to the very beginning of the clip, go to the very end after I created the keyframe. I'm just gonna make it a little bigger. See how that looks? Yeah, that looks nice. Making it a little bigger. So to make it a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna do the opposite now. So I'm gonna go to the very end of the video. I'm gonna create a keyframe there that it stays like that at the end. And I'm gonna go to the very beginning of the video and I'm gonna hit Command T. And I'm just gonna make my background bigger. So once we play the video, it gets smaller and the water gets bigger. So it creates this kind of parallax, which will look really interesting. See how that looks? I really like that. The water's getting bigger, the trees are getting smaller, I'm getting bigger. So it looks really cool in my opinion. So once I'm happy with that, um, the only thing to do is just export it. So we want to go up to file, go to export and go to render video and then select the folder and then hit render. And now it's exporting the video. You're done. See, that wasn't too hard to do. And it's a really great way to make your photos pop and really spice up your Instagram. If you come up with something cool, make sure you tag me on Instagram. I'm really interested what you guys come up with. And yeah, I only can say thanks for watching and hit the like button if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I see you guys in the next one.